Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about my Scorpion Mobile HF antenna. Welcome back and thanks for being here. My name is Scott and if you've been watching my channel for a little while then you probably have already seen a Scorpion antenna video on my channel. Well I've made some changes to, to the way I do things with the antenna and I figured I would just make a whole new video. So you don't have to go back and watch that video again. I'm just going to quickly tell you what this thing is. This is an HF antenna. It is uh, by Scorpion. This is the SA680. My model is the Black Widow. These antennas come standard uh, as stainless steel with a clear Lexan tube over the coil where the Black Widow is refinished, powder coated in gloss black and then has a black Lexan tube over the coil. I decided to go with the black because it fits in better with the color scheme on my car. This here is its shunt coil. I've opted to encase mine in a box to protect it because sometimes when I'm grabbing hold of things, I had bent up my coil. So I put mine in a box. The antenna will tune. It's a motorized antenna. So this coil moves up and down to extend the coil, make it longer or shorter. And so it will tune from 3.5 megahertz up to 20, 29, almost 29 megahertz. And so that for in ham radio speak, that's 80 meters up to 10 meters. It comes standard with this 66 inch whip. I have a quick release tab on mine and this allows full use of the, the entire bandwidth of the antenna. I use a capacitance hat on mine. I will get to that in just a minute this antenna will accept full legal power. So I can use a 1500 watt amplifier with this antenna. That would be insane in a car. So of course I don't do that, but it, it will take full legal power. Uh, I mentioned the capacitance hat. When I bought mine, I also ordered this uh, capacitance hat, which is offered by Scorpion. And what a capacitance hat does is it increases the radiation resistance of the antenna and it draws more current up the length of the radiator instead of it all being down here at the bottom like they would be without a cap hat. And so now, as you can see, this is much shorter than 60, uh, 66 inches, I think is what I said that other one was. This is 36 inches, so it allows a shorter antenna but it is electrically longer because of the hat. The other thing that that allows me to do is pay out less coil. So basically the less coil I have paid out, the more efficient the antenna is. And then of course, physically shorter because, I mean, come on, we still like to uh, drive through drive throughs and got to watch out for low overhangs and things like that. And so uh, a physically shorter antenna is attractive. Later, I got my hands on a larger capacitance hat. These are also called cap hats. Uh, this one is by W8UZZ. Uh, the radiator is 38 inches instead of 36, but it has a much larger cap hat on it. This one is 35 inches round and has eight spokes on it. And it lets me pay out even less coil. I will do a separate video about this cap hat. I think it's worth its own time. So I'm not gonna talk any more about this, but uh, this is my standard setup. So the drawback to using a cap hat, it catches more wind. And so I have to watch my speeds and uh, I lose the 10 meter, 12 meter and 15 meter bands uh, because with this thing being electrically longer, that means that I can't tune the higher frequencies. So if I know I want to work those frequencies, I carry the whip in the car. It'll just slide into the window and just sit beside the driver or the passenger seat. And uh, so I can just swap the whips out nice and fast. Like I said, I've got quick release mounts on all of that. And so uh, I've got everything set up to use the cap hats. And anytime I mount this antenna, I mount the cap hat. I honestly don't use six through 15 meters very often. So let me talk a little bit about the wiring that I have here. One of the major changes that I have made, if you, if you saw that video, and I'll, I'll show a little bit of B-roll of it, but as I did the mounting scheme, showing you how it mounts to the car, um, I got it into the trailer hitch and started tightening everything down. And then I hooked up all the wiring. So I'm making all of my connections. And I think it took me about five and a half minutes to do that, which is not awful at all. 
But what I have now, you can see uh, my uh, coaxial connection here and my antenna controller connection. And then I have uh, three separate coils in the back. Uh, I have choked all of this to keep common mode current out of the car. And it is all permanently attached to my hitch mount. And so now it all goes in the hitch in one fail swoop, super fast. And then I have two connections to hook up. Oh, my ground wire goes in whenever I put in my retaining bolt and then RF connection here and my antenna controller connection here. For an antenna controller, I used to use, where did I put it? This uh, MFJ manual controller. The, um, the antenna comes with a simple up-down switch, and that's really all you need to use this antenna because you can tune it by ear and listen for the static to pick up and then fine-tune once you get close. But this uh, MFJ antenna controller, it's a screwdriver antenna controller, model uh, 1924. This allows me to program in certain frequencies. There's a turn counter in here, a little read switch, so every half turn of the motor will, will be counted by this, and then I can program it to stop at certain count points, and then fine tune with SWR when I get to where I wanna be. I don't use this anymore. I still have it all set up and I can use it. I decided to go with a different solution. Later, I discovered the uh, Tune-Matic TM1, and I have no idea where that thing had been my whole life. That one is completely automated, and I'm gonna make a separate video about that, and I will share that with you. That is how I tune. So, mounting this to the car. As you can see, I have my, my makeshift uh, trailer hitch here. So I use a one and a quarter inch hitch receiver on the car, and all I have to do is just grab the antenna, I store it here in my shed, I pull it out of the overhead and then just walk it over to the car and plug it into the hitch. As I plug it into the hitch, once I line up the, uh, the hitch pin, I don't use uh, hitch pins in my hitch, I use a half inch bolt. And I just zip it in with my, uh, my cordless impact wrench and then nut the other side for a little bit of extra protection and then two connections. RF connection and antenna controller connection, and it's done. Let's see, first step, remove this hitch plug. Then we grab the antenna into the hitch receiver, line up the hole. Here's my bonding strap, so the bolt goes through there. Then the star washer. I just get it started. slap a nut on the other side. It doesn't have to be incredibly tight. It's just a little bit of a backup. The hardest part here is digging the, uh, digging the wires out from underneath the bumper. Scott, if you had an SUV, it wouldn't be so hard. Well, if I had an SUV, then it wouldn't be a GTI. This plug is nice and tight. Ooh, especially when it's cold. It's about 40 degrees out right now. This isn't usually so hard. If the car was on the ground, it'd be a little less pleasant than this. But here we go. And then I remove this cap from the feed line. And that's it. I've, all I gotta do now is put the cap hat on in the radiator and I'm ready to go. And so gone is the excuse for mounting this and it just being too inconvenient to run full time. Well, not full time. I don't ever run it full time because uh, 
quite frankly, this thing is expensive enough to where I would not leave it on my car overnight. I do park outside. I don't have a, a garage that I park in. And so uh, it gets put away every night. But now it is so easy that there's practically no excuse to not just mount it anytime I want to use it. And so I, I do. Uh, if anything, uh, being behind on my log work and QSL cards keeps me off the air more than the uh, inconvenience of mounting this antenna. So this has been very fast and easy to use and I like it. I have, uh, I'm in uh, Southeast Virginia and I've gotten fantastic signal reports from all over the Eastern Seaboard. Uh, I'm heard out of Texas. I've been picked up in Europe little bit in California, Oregon. Those are really weak copies over there because, uh, let's face it, mobile applications, no matter how big this antenna is, in a mobile environment there are compromises, especially the way I have mine mounted. The hitch mount is not the most efficient way to mount an HF antenna or any antenna on a car, but it is my most convenient option, especially since I like to preserve the, um, the aesthetics of the car and its function. Obviously with this thing mounted, I can't open my hatchback, but since I have a rear seat delete in my car, I can get into the trunk very easily through one of the back doors. And so it's only a minor inconvenience to have this thing mounted. Let me know if you have any questions and keep an eye out for me on the air. Most of my activity seems to center around parks on the air or POTA. I might make a POTA video. I shared one, but uh, you know, it's kind of boring. I hope to get a little better at it. We'll see how that goes. Ham radio, amateur radio is, uh, it's a participant sport. It's not, uh, it's not so exciting to watch. It's more, it's more interesting to be involved with it. So I, if I do make some POTA videos, I will try to make them short. Check out my website to learn more about this antenna and my setup. I'll put a link in the video description below and I will also share videos very soon about the TuneMatic TM1 automatic motorized antenna controller as well as the capacitance hat by W8UZZ. They both deserve their own space and so I will share those soon. As always, I appreciate you being here and I will see you next time. Take care.